is a more equitable distribution of wealth, which is to everyone's advantage, from the very poorest to the very richest, will benefit from a vigorous, energetic economy. 
And I think it's fantastic that you can have 2,000 people gathered in the financial heart of the civilized world, and the mainstream media doesn't cover that. I ask you people, this is day 15, if you have not heard about this yet from your mainstream media, you need to ask yourself why. What are they afraid of? Because this is freedom. This is what this country is about.
that 54% of the American public is in solidarity with us. So, Whoa. fuck yeah. Thank you. 
crisis we know that there is an economic crisis but there is also a spiritual crisis going on in this country but we want to clarify that in a way that we understand something that is very clear we need to fix this mess something is wrong 
Now many of us were taught that America is about liberty, and justice, and equality for all. But today, in large part, due to occupied Wall Street, all over America and all over the world, we're questioning that premise. When the 400 wealthiest Americans have a greater combined net worth than the bottom 150 million Americans, it's time to question the status quo. When 49.1 million Americans are living in poverty, it's time, time to question the status quo. It's reported there are 400 billionaires in America, of which 59 reside in New York City alone. And tonight in America and throughout this city, there are too many thousands of homeless people. We can do better, do you agree? Yeah. On November 15th, in the dead of night, when most of us were sleeping, and the media could be presumed to be absent. The Bloomberg administration moved as if it was dealing with a life-threatening emergency to eliminate the OWS protesters from Liberty Park. Approximately 220 people were arrested, property that reportedly filled up 26 sanitation trucks were carted away. The tents from the People's Library were pulled down by what appeared to be NYPD personnel. Approximately, listen to this, 3,600 books were unreasonably seized. Only about 1,000 were recovered, absolutely. And 200 of those thousand were so damaged and made unusable. So approximately 2,800 books are missing. In addition, furnishings, computers, and equipment were not returned. On behalf of OWS, I and other lawyers have filed a notice of claim. And if we cannot settle with the city in the next 30 days, we will go to court and litigate the issue. And we will put the city officials under oath about what happened that night. We cannot and we will not ignore the violations of civil rights that occurred on the evening, on the morning of November 15, 2011. I'm here, I only have 120 seconds, I'm here to say support OWS even if you do not agree with every position and every action. Please support OWS. We must con confront and overcome all forms of inequality, including economic inequality. And finally, and I know I don't have to preach to you all, but to the rest of New Yorkers, we need to speak up, we need to march, and we need to rally in opposition to violations of civil rights. And we must help New York and America live up to the principles and values of freedom, justice, and equality for all. Not some, but for all. And that people are perfectly capable of organizing a new kind of society for themselves. So I'm here today to join my voice to yours in condemning those who use the state's monopoly of armed violence to squash our right to the city, to squash our right to the future. And we should all remember this. If the last 30 years belonged to Wall Street, the next 30 years belongs to us. Yeah. Now I'd like to call up a special guest, a very important voice of conscience, known and loved for many film roles, actress Susan Sarandon. Oh God, okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I guess we have a mixed crowd here. Some people that have been occupying, some people that are following the occupiers. I recognize some of you when I was down there before. I'm going to speak 
I'm sure this is going out. I just see, whenever I speak, I see my words going out in a bubble turned around and held against me later. So I'm going to try to <laughs> try to know what I said perfectly so that I can defend myself later. I can't believe she's here. I'm so happy. Oh, my God. Thank you. She said she'll defend me. Thank you. I know you will. You guys are hard-ass, kicking butt kind of people here. Yeah. Give yourself an applause. Absolutely. Yeah. The Occupy movement has opened up a very public debate about economic justice and the link between government and corporate influence. It has exposed brutal practices of suppression that are inconsistent with the core of our democracy, which is free speech and the right to assemble. Yeah. People of many colors, from many walks of life, have come together in a thousand cities in the U.S. to build community and to ask important questions. They were ridiculed, demonized, simplified, and distorted by the media in most instances. Sometimes they faced intense police brutality. But they began a conversation, a dialogue. These conversations began publicly. They moved into schools, into offices, and around dining room tables. We asked, what kind of society is this? We asked, what should it be? We asked, why people in this great nation are going hungry, are homeless, when some are amassing obscene amounts of wealth protected by the government? What are we doing to the environment in the service of profit for the few? Asking questions, serious, imaginative dialogue is the healthiest, most necessary element of democracy. Nonviolent demonstrations have always signaled positive change. That is how we reboot this great experiment that we call democracy. Repression is not acceptable. Even if we disagree on the answers, it is essential that we demand and support the right to ask the questions. This is what democracy looks like. You are what democracy looks like. And I support your right to ask these questions. I will be there for you. Everybody, good luck. Keep it up. I'm glad the weather's getting warmer. It'll make things much easier. Congratulations to all of you who are here tonight and not in the jails and prisons of a city that has become a place of mass incarceration and mass arrests. Part of the Part of the reason is the same reason that you mentioned money as a driving force in the repression that is taking place in the United States. In fiscal year 2010, do you know how much money NYPD received from you taxpayers just for overtime? Do you have any idea as to the size of the overtime that was paid to the police before the occupation began? More than a half a billion dollars. One of the things that we really got to know when resisting is what it is that the New York City budget gives to the New York City Police Department. It's really astronomical. It's multi-billions of dollars. And it's no accident that NYPD is the preeminent police force probably in the world. 
It's in Tel Aviv. It's in Beirut. It's in Newark. It's in Buffalo. It's in Syracuse. It's in SUNY. All the SUNY schools. It's in Baruch, not far from here. It's everywhere. And we have to make everyone aware of this, and we have to resist it. So stay strong. The National Lawyers Guild New York City chapter will always respond. Will always respond. And we are also responsive because this struggle also educates legal folk. They become much more human. They become much more able to deal with people and people's needs. So keep up the struggle. It'll keep us progressive. So I told him that he'd better shut his mouth and do his job like a man. And he answered, listen, Father, I will He's better when his brother that died. What the hell does he think he's doing to his father who brought him upright? Take your place on the great band. Kill the traitor. 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 Kill the
la 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 la
invested in underwrites loans for loans for we have an alternative we have an alternative a massive G green jobs a massive green jobs program to get this country working again to get this country working again to mitigate the effects mitigate the effects of climate change of climate change what do we want what do we want Climate justice! Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! 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 Why do we want it? Climate justice! Why do we want it? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! Why do we want it? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! When do we want it? Now! Why do we want it? Climate justice! When do we want it? Now! When? Now! The only thing green about you! The only thing green about you! Shame! 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 Shame!
no guns to shoot. Well, what I got is black girls not.
Labor, labor, community, community, students, students, faith, faith, occupy, occupy. We march twenty thousand strong from Foley Square to Zuccotti, we sure and did. labor leaders met with the people that had been occupying. We built a strong force that worked all four, all four, to keep the occupation going, to keep the movement going, to build a national struggle for economic justice. We won stuff here in New York. We won a millionaire's tax that brought $3 billion to fight austerity, to pay for schools and services, and to fight college tuition increases around New York. We moved 650,000 people from big banks into credit unions all over the country. We saved the houses of hundreds of people by stopping foreclosures and occupying our homes. And as you just heard, occupiers have been working city by city, workplace by workplace, to fight for better wages, better working conditions, worker by worker, family by family, to fight for the 99%. This is the anniversary, I'm glad you're all here. Mad respect to all the people that were there on the first day. And I'm really glad that labor unions and community groups, nonprofits from all over New York City were there to stand with you in the park, have been there to stand with you since the park. We've worked together on city budget issues, state budget issues, and we're going to keep this fight going. Because we know that this government isn't working for working people, it's not working for labor, it's not working for students, it's not working for the 99%, and we're here to keep the movement strong, to build it over time, and to keep the labor community student face struggle going together. Occupy everywhere. Thank you.
We did. We, we, we stood up, and, and, and unless the answer that they think they're doing right now is to make the bankers drool so much that they accidentally put out the blaze they themselves ignited, then no one anywhere is trying to turn this con game around. It was one year ago that the biggest protest in a generation started right here. Right? We stood up and we and we fought this shit. We were against everything. We were against the media. We were against the corporations. The media. One of the first articles the New York Times wrote about Occupy was that it was wreaking havoc on area bathrooms. <laughs> they care more about the harm done to area bathrooms than they care about the harm done to millions of Americans by foreclosures and Wall Street yeah. titans who make Charlie Sheen's moral compass look like that of Rosa Parks. <laughs> That's what they care about. That's that's the media. They they said the mothers were having trouble getting police getting their strollers around police barricades. Well God forbid the revolution get in the way of your evening stroll with little baby trust fund. God forbid. And the media won't even cover it. But but people are tired of this shit. People are tired of greed over good, of profitable pollution over people, of war for wealth over the welfare of average citizens. People are sick of this shit. This is a thought revolution, alright? That's what it is. It's different. It's different than a traditional revolution. It's a revolution of the mind, and it's not going to be dissuaded by pepper spray, police barricades, driving rain, all right? Pepper spraying us is like throwing water on gremlins. The more you do it, the more of us fucking show up. This is a revolution of the mind, and it's not going to fit easily into your Pilates schedule, all right? It's not going to wait until after your dinner party, your hair appointment, your tummy tuck, your titty tilt. This is a thought revolution and it's not going to be televised as Gil Scott Heron told us but it will be digitized and yeah. posted on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter yeah. and any real ideas are told. You might have to scroll through a couple of invites to Farmville but it'll be in there. It'll be in there. Alright, this is a thought revolution and it would however like to apologize for shitting all over everyone's apathy. The public restrooms weren't working. <laughs> and that is our number one problem in this country, apathy. The amount of apathy in this country to yeah. sit around. It's 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 utterly ridiculous. And you can't even you can't even survive in this civilization with apathy. You can't even talk to someone. You can't there's no apathy marches. You know, what do we want? We don't know. When do we want it? You tell us. <laughs> It doesn't exist, so we gotta punch apathy in the dick and slap it in the vag. We do. We gotta move past that shit, and that's what this is. That's what this is. It's moving past our apathy because because there's nothing they there's nothing the corporations that rule the society like more than apathy. All right, they are continuing to suck all the wealth to the top one percent. The six the six heirs of the Walmart fortune have the same amount of wealth as the bottom forty percent of this country. 155 million people and you don't have to be a physics professor to understand that to top everything's collapse that's what they do all right all you have to do is picture philip seymour hoffman sitting on the shoulders of natalie portman it doesn't last long it doesn't last long these corps some of these corporations do nothing but suck and suck and suck like eddie murphy movies <laughs> That's why we have to stand up against it. And people aren't just apathetic, they're misinformed because they're going to the mainstream media to learn about their shit. Yeah. And this media, it's, it's a catastrophe. And as Jello was saying, that I'm not going to defend any of the mainstream media. But it was a pretty funny study they did where they found out that people who watch Fox News know less about what's happening in the world than people who watch no news at all. <laughs> like, that's my blowing. That's my blowing. No one would keep watching a sports channel that made them dumber about sports. <laughs> Just walking around like, yeah, the Lakers beat Tiger Woods. <laughs> People are like, I don't even watch sports, but I'm pretty sure one of those was a basketball team and the other was like a tiger or something. <laughs> People are misinformed. I, I think what we should do, we can make people more informed. I don't, we just need better media. We just, we just need better media. The media also wanted to say it's only young people down here. It's only young people who care about this shit. Bullshit. Look around you. It's every age, race, color, and creed. All right? 
Even if it were all the young people, who the hell should care about this shit? Who's got to sit around in it for the next 70 years? Who's got to sit around in this, drinking the tainted water, eating the mutated fish, watching the fed and reality shit on TV, create a nation of malignant imaginations? It's us, all right? It's young people who have to sit in this rancid bathwater, twiddling our thumbs and flicking our ding-dongs and going, hey, remember back when we could have changed this shit? We yeah. should have, like, done something. Yeah. And our kids are going to ask us, where were you when we could have gone a different path? Yeah. And what are you going to say? Well, there was a popular game where you slingshot these birds <laughs> at these towers. So I did a lot of that. <laughs> hey, guys, I would like to keep in touch with you because you're the most amazing people in the world. I'm at LeeCamp.net and at LeeCamp on Twitter. And let me just close by saying this. The Mayans say that the world's going to end in a couple of months. And I think they might be right because yeah. another world is possible.
certainly had the Occupy attitude, the punk attitude, the beat attitude, the activist attitude in spades by the name of Phil Oaks. Yeah. And I mean, this is also in part for Abby Hoffman and a quote he had that really resonated with me back in the day as a kid that the biggest problems they were having getting people to rise up and do the right thing in the halls of power to stop the Vietnam War it wasn't the right wingers in the defense department zombies, it was the liberals if Hubert Humphrey had opposed the Vietnam War Richard Nixon would never have been president and where would we be today? So, on that note, here is a new version of a song by Phil Oaks. Let's hear it for Phil Oaks real quick. Yeah. I'm dedicated to my friend, his, song, his daughter, Megan Lee Oaks, who works for the ACLU in California. I cried when they shot John Lennon. Tears ran down my spine. And I cried when I watched JFK as though I lost a father of mine. But Bradley Manning and Mumia had it coming. They got what they asked for this time. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. <laughs> I go to pro-choice rallies, recycle my head cans and jars. I'll honk if you love the dead, and my SUV's a hybrid now. But don't talk about revolution, that's going a little bit too far. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. I cheered when Obama was chosen, my faith in the system reborn. I'll do anything to save our schools if my taxes don't go up more. And I love blacks and gays, the Latinos, as long as they don't move next door. So love me, love me, love me, I'm a liberal. Rush Limbaugh and Fox News could all hang their heads in shame. I can't understand where they're at. Colbert should set them all straight. But if Neighborhood Watch doesn't know you, I hope the cops take down your name. So love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. Once I was young and had an attitude, stickers covered the car I drove in. Even went on some direct actions when there weren't rent-a-cops to be seen. Ah, but now I've grown older and wiser, and that's why I'm turning you in. So love me, love me, love me again. Love me, love me, love me. Love The problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer's rather easy if you take it logically. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to loathe your lender. No, wait, make that 99 ways. You need some help? I'll get this party started, all right? But if you think of one, you let me know. You just call it fraud, Rod. Huh? You know it's a scam, Sam. You're selling us swindle, Wendell. It's a bitch, Mitch. And you listen to me. Anybody? Come by. You threw us under the bus. Gus, we're broke and disgusted. It's a fraud, Claude. Say it again. It's a fraud, Claude. It's a fraud, Claude. You screwed us over, Rover. You screwed us over, Rover. Or 
work with me here. Come on, I got one more. We ain't gonna pay you back, Jack. We ain't gonna pay you back, Jack. <laughs> it's the year of Jubilee. Lee, we're gonna set ourselves free. I'm Michelle Shock, and I've had the privilege of being involved with the Occupy Los Angeles, Occupy Wall Street movement in solidarity all the way from LA. Here I am, y'all. Now tell me what you want. You want something you've heard before? Because it's probably not one of mine. You want you want one of mine? You probably ain't heard it before. Someone's calling out Anchorage. That's the obvious. There's a little song about Jello's hometown, San Francisco. A town so foggy. You know why they call it that? Fog town. You would not know you were fast asleep and you only see this city in the broad daylight. In the broad daylight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sing it like this. She had a man named Ward, he tried to keep her clean. But late last night when the heroine took her, there was one less siren when the sirens reached the sea. Reached the sea. Fall down. Fall down. Fall down. See what's coming, y'all. Hold me down. For your consideration, a poetic oration by one Marge Piercy. Morning Half Life Blues. Y'all ready? Can you dig it? Girls buck the wind in the grooves towards work in fuzzy coats, promise to be as warm as fur. The shop window snicker flashing them hurriedly long. You are not pretty enough. Not pretty enough. Blow with yesterday's papers through the boiled coffee morning. They dream of that stuff on the subway in the heart of a grove of skyscrapers. And they bother themselves for nothing. Not by the hour. Not by the pound. And most certainly not by the skinful. That part in which no one will give them or even sell them the key. <laughs> Though we've all thought briefly we'd found it drunk or in bed. Black girls with thin legs and high necks stalking like herons. Black girls with blue legs and green eyelids and strawberry breasts swept off to be frozen in fluorescent cubes. The vacuums of your job sucks your brains dry and fills you with the ooze of melted cocks. Living is labor. This is your rented death. You grasp at vain commodities and specific lusts to make up, to pay for each day which opens like a can and is empty and another and another and another Afternoons like dinosaur eggs stuffed with glue Girls of the dirty morning ticketed and spent You will be less at 40 than at 20 Your living is the waste product of somebody's milk I would fix you like buds to a city where people work to make and do things necessary and good. And where work is as real as bread and babies and trees in parks. And there 
Okay, one of the Jenna. favorite tactics of the 1% and their corporate cartoon media is the more they steal, the more to try to get people to blame somebody else, often who's in less good shape than they are. Oh no, it must be brown people, it must be immigrants. Oh, the real enemy causing the budget deficits, it must be teachers unions. It must be those gosh darn firemen. It must be organized labor. We've got to get rid of organized labor so there's this more organized, shall we say, corporate coup, a slow, ongoing corporate coup that I first started to smell even in the late 70s. And what they're trying to do to workers and to the rest of us as they eviscerate the middle class and make us more like a third world country isn't capitalism anymore, it's feudalism. New feudalism. And on the front lines, fighting back against new feudalism to hang on to their jobs, their dignity, their benefits so they don't just get thrown away at a certain age like a Soylent Green movie or something. <laughs> Coalition of Labor from a variety of sources. Here they are. And now we see the boldest step by teachers in Chicago who went out I think it was uh, 25, 30,000 of them. Yesterday there were 25,000 people in the streets and seemed to have won. <laughs> in Wisconsin, although the attack was on public workers, private sector workers went out in their support. Public workers are now the last widely organized group since they've attacked private sector workers by shipping their jobs abroad. So they're going now after public sector workers. One of the largest groups is the teachers. Um, one of the kinds of solidarity we saw, and Occupy helped it to happen, was when there was a lockout of Con Edison, we appeared to Lem and the Central Lem and the Central Lem and the Central Lem and the Central Labor Council brought together leaders of all the unions in New York who for the first time all pledged to support one union struggle, and they got the lockout over. We also saw this kind of solidarity on July 24th, where a lot of the low-wage workers that Immigrant Worker Justice works with, and the 99 Tickets worked with, and United New York works with, had a common march, and they marched to Union Square, and when they got there, the Con Ed workers and the transit workers were waiting for them. That's what we need more of. We need the 99% to stick together. Now, I want to see, there are a number of workers who were supposed to be up here speaking. Um, we have endorsed Occupy Wall Street, and we are very grateful for the support that Occupy Wall Street has demonstrated towards us. We are all in this together. As I speak, the Postal Service is being attacked. They want to diminish a lot of these post offices and sh shut them down. We have a lot of the elderly, disabled, the poor, and small businesses that depend on the Postal Service. It is their constitutional right to have this service. And we will not allow them to interfere with servicing all of us. I probably... I probably... Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. You'll have to bear with me. I just want you to know that I probably say that I'm one of the 99% with you guys. We have to stick together, work together. The fight is not over until it is over. Peace, my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. I, I live uh, just down the street here, between kind of between here and, and Sukati Park, and uh, spent a lot of time there last year and was pretty inspired by what was going on there. And I imagine all of you guys were pretty inspired as well by what was happening down there. And uh, to me, the most uh, interesting part about it, about everything that's happened in the last year and a half or so since what seemingly started in, in, the, in the Arab countries and has kind of spread around the world, has been in, in what I've been characterizing as the rise of the new nonviolent left. The, the, the first time there's been a, such a, a rising up since I was a much younger man. It's very inspiring and we hope to keep it as nonviolent as possible, obviously. And anyway, I, uh, I spent a bunch of time down there and I wrote a song that kind of, kind of spoke to some of what I was thinking about when I was hanging out in Zuccotti Park. And this is called Shouts.
guess I'm just gonna have to play it pretty soft. <laughs> what matters are the words, though. I waited, anticipating for you. Blood grips in the headers, Latin kings and thirteens. They all waiting with the crew to take your life in a second. No expression, what they gotta lose. Loaded weapons, as I said, and it may be the last breath you use. You better pray for forgiveness before it's finished. Uh, bullets coming through with no hesitation. Death ain't waiting. Another brother dead on the news. 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 I said another brother dead on the news. Another brother dead on the news Another mother crying on the news He just had his first child Gotta calm down And lead the streets alone He can't believe he's a father now Cause he never had one of his own he can't come out now Then his boys call him on the phone They tell him, man, we need ya Man, Richie got shot around the corner So he grabs his Beretta Let's go get down Oh, let me grab my shoes Hop in my car They can't be far Then they go shoot Oh, let's fly like a lightning, no oh, so frightening. Oh, one bullet gets through, straight through his forehead. Another brother dead on the news. 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 Another brother dead. Another brother dead on the news. Oh, another brother dead on the news. Oh, sometimes I just gotta moan.
stop me running back for a place You better watch the color of your clothes They shoot you in your head for your chain Stray shots aimed at your child And a bullet don't know who to People in the street acting wild Leaving another brother dead The hood ain't living the American dream You I ain't never scared, never scared. So we get prepared get to say now we let stuck in this nightmare Come on, please lie to ya Schools don't school ya Cops wanna shoot ya So what you gonna do about it? Rich get richer, poor get thinner How comfortable your pillow So what you gonna do about it? Right the fuck now, because I've got something to say. Oh, we are 99%. We want everything. 
never stop me as I go walking that freedom highway. Nobody living can make me turn back now. Cause this land was made for you and me. Say, this land is Thailand. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf City Road.
water is still there. And when everything falls apart, water is still there. The fortune has fallen on its face, but we're all still together to save the human race. Oh, which side are you on? 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 They say in New York City, there are no neutrals here. You're either with the 99 or you're with the mayor. Which side are you on? Cause it's a cold day in the street of Houston. So many people in the streets of much confusion. Why many people? Which side are you on? 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 Which